Hi guys, through this video I'm going to make a high level overview of Shelter and uh, the main options that provides to the user. So basically, uh, Shelter is a dynamic uh, cell code injector or in other words, a dynamic PE infector. You can use Shelter in order to hide uh, a payload, um, in other words, a cell code inside legitimate uh, Windows native uh, applications. It currently supports only 32-bit applications, but in the future I might uh, extend uh, this to support uh, also 64-bit applications. Uh, if you want to know more about Shelter, uh, I suggest you go and uh, take a look at the readme file that uh, comes with it. So when you execute uh, Shelter, you are going uh, uh, to see this, uh, this logo and uh, it's going to ask you for the target. The target is basically the executable that uh, you're going to use in order to hide your cell code inside. So Shelter provides an infinitely polymorphic template where you can inject cell code because you can use basically any standalone 32-bit application. You, do, you don't have to use any static templates. Of course, the executable can be something you created or just a legitimate application. Uh, for example, this hex editor that I'm going to use uh, right now. So, we're not going to discuss in detail uh, the various features, just uh, uh, as I said, this is going to be a high-level overview of Shelter. So, let's enter the name of the executable. We see that uh, Shelter is going to eliminate the dynamic page if it's enabled and uh, any digital signature, let's say, information um, from the file. This is done basically in order to uh, avoid the same AVs to trigger some pre-filters in case uh, they see that the digital signature it cannot be validated. So then it's going to ask us if uh, we want to lock thread context. We're going to see this detail, uh, this feature in detail later uh, in, the, in the next videos. But for now, you can see that some options have uh, this H here, which means that uh, um, if you use uh, uh, this option, you can see some uh, tips and information about uh, what basically this uh, option has to do about. Here you can enter the number of instructions. We can put, for example, one million. Uh, Shelter provides the option that we can uh, uh, stop the tracing and continue with the rest of the injection process if we want by pressing Ctrl plus C. Uh, here again, we have the option have some information. Generally, you just need to start for, to trace from the entry point. Again here, uh, Celt is asking us if we want to uh, check for self-modifying code uh, in real time. Then again, it's going to ask if we want to trace all threads in case uh, the process creates more than one. And finally, it's going to ask if we want to to see the uh, the execution, the instructions disassembled uh, on the screen uh, in real time. Again, we have an option here. Generally, you don't want this because uh, this slows down the tracing engine because um, it will have to uh, disassemble and print every instruction in real time. So then the, the tracing is triggered. We see here uh, the instructions. It will only take uh, in consideration the instructions that belong inside the PE file. Uh, of course, it traces the entire um, execution in user land, but uh, it doesn't take consideration instructions that are um, uh, executed outside the PE image because uh, that code cannot be taken in consideration uh, uh, in order to permanently inject uh, the cell code later. So, the number of instructions refer uh, to instructions executed inside the PE file itself. So, by pressing Ctrl plus C, we just can stop the tracing. Then we can just select the payload. I'm just using a simple payload to launch calculator, not encoded. Uh, we can see here the option help. We can enable this um, in case uh, the payload uh, is encoded, but we can also enable it if the payload is not. 
we are going to see all these features in detail in the next videos then it's going to ask if we want to prepend polymorphic code we have an option help also here uh, we're going to see also this in detail in the next videos and then it's going to ask if we're going to see the disassembled entries so we have an option here So I'm going also to um, just select no here. Uh, we see that uh, based on the instruction that we traced, uh, we have 5,390 different uh, locations from where we can uh, start ejection. So I'm just going to select an index. Normally you want to see what are the instructions there. So you, when it's going to ask you if you want to see the disassembled entries, you're going to say yes. But for now, this is not uh, uh, necessary. We're just uh, having an overview of the tool. So I'm just going to inject in the last one. So um, once everything is completed, we see that uh, CELT is going to give you also the virtual address. You're going to need this in case you want to load the executable to a debugger and directly go to that address and see what you have injected. And of course, it's going to also provide the, the file offset in case you want to open it with a hex editor. And uh, here we see what was the original checksum in the PE header. And uh, cell draft injection is going to calculate the new checksum and uh, fix it inside the PE header. So if I, if I execute, now the hex editor calculator is going to be launched. Alright, uh, this was just an overview uh, of uh, the tool, um, thank you for watching.